Okay, in this lesson, I just want to teach you a very brief and beginner's guide to Google Analytics. I say to everybody that I meet in the hospitality industry, you know, how can how are you tracking people on your website? How do you know if your website that somebody's probably designed for you is being effective? And a lot of the time, the answer I get back is I don't know. And there's this fantastic free tool called Google Analytics that everybody can access that ideally every website designer would set you up on for free, but they don't. So you need to go and do it yourself. Um, I'm going to quickly show you um, Google Analytics and as well, I'll show you how you, you can add that to your, your website as well. So first things first, I'm going to show you a client of mine, um, just their um, Google Analytics folder and file so first things first how do you get these results from your website so <clears throat> when you create a google analytics account you're going to get um a little bit of code can you see here this little code here starts with ua well that is what you're going to need so you take that number um, how many digit number is it? You take that little uh, these digit numbers and then what you do is that you can go to your website designer and just say please add this code to my website and give them that code and say if this is Google Analytics code give them that and they will add it to every page. Make sure they do add it to every page because that is that is really important. So most important thing is you set up a Google Analytics account and you can do so by just typing in into a, a Google search engine. There you go, Google Analytics. And it takes about five minutes to get set up and, and off you go. So when you log into your home screen, once it's all been created, and if you haven't if you haven't got an account yet and it's never been set up, then I would give it about seven to 10 days to so get the website designer to add it into your site. It will take them two minutes of their time. So if they try and charge you, have none of that. Just do it, you know, get it to be done. If you have to do it yourself, find out what platform you're using, for example, WordPress or whoever, because there's some really cool little free plugins that you can add, whether it's Wix or like I say, Wix or WordPress, etc. But if you're going to do it yourself, be careful because you've got to make sure you do it right. Also as well, take that code and put it into your uh, booking engine. So Avivo or free to book or whoever that you use, you can add it in to there. So you can most importantly track how your website is doing, but how your uh, booking engine is doing as well. So how many people are coming onto your booking engine, how many people are booking, etc., which is which is cool and really important. The reason why we do this is that you could be spending hundreds of pounds in advertising and you just do not know how or where that money is going. You could have spent, you know, a couple of hundred or a thousand pounds on a new website, but it might be just putting people off. You need to know how many people are coming onto your website, how many people are staying, and how many people are going through and booking. So when you go onto your Google Analytics page, this is your home screen. It defaults to the last seven days. I always last, like to go for the last 28 days or 30 days. So the last 30 days, um, there's been 930 <coughs> users visit the Rangham House hotel website um, and I'm going to just show you the, the bare basic information to look at. Bounce rate, that means how many people are leaving. So a third of the people that visit the website www.rangamhouse.com are leaving without going anywhere else. So that's, that's what bounce rate means. It means they arrive on a page and they don't click on somewhere else. So if they go to their home page, they don't click on accommodation or they don't click on the restaurant or the contact us. They go on the home page, decide they don't like it or get what information they need from the home page, whether it's a phone number and then they leave. Now, 32% may sound like a lot, but it's not. An average um, is about 25% to about 35%. Anything more than 40% it needs to be looking at because that means that you know, nearly half of your audience that are coming onto your website are leaving without going anywhere else. And site duration, it means how long do they spend on your website? So two minutes in, in total is the 
is the average here. So, I mean, this is great to know, but I think the most important thing is how many people are leaving and how long are they staying on the site? Obviously, the longer they stay on the site, the better, uh, because it means that they're gonna be making a book and finding out all the information about you. So you can scroll down and you can get all of this information, but what I like to do is go and focus on these three subsections, audience, acquisition, acquisition, sorry, and behavior. Audience means where your people are looking at you from. Acquisition means where are they coming to you from and behavior. So when they get onto your website, where are they going? So we'll go quickly look at audience first. And again, I'm just gonna show you the, the most basic information because you can spend hours on here. And um, I've got a, an okay knowledge of Google Analytics, but it, you know, there's people that have got <clears throat> such a better knowledge than me and you can just literally delve so far in but as a hospitality owner you haven't got the time to do this you know um so i'm going to show you the basic information that everybody can look at so audience information as you can see here it's defaulted back to a week so you just customize it to the last 30 days which you can do in the top right section and what it will do when it works, apply. You can see out of everybody that's visited the page in the last month, which ones are returning visitors, which is cool because that could be a customer that has stayed with you in the past, um, been on your website before and come back again, or it's somebody that came onto your maybe page a, a week ago, said, right, I want to book this, but I've got to check with you know my partner and then come back and booked. And these are new visitors, so people who come onto the page for the first time. So I can see that the majority of people, uh, their language is English. I can see that the the cities that they're visiting from, so London is really popular at the moment. Um, Leeds, Scarborough, so that's the local area. That the hotel is based in Scarborough. It is a restaurant and a tea rooms as well as being a hotel. So that would explain why so many local people have been on it and you can even go and find out i mean this doesn't really care to me but what browser they're using um what operation system they're using you can get you know pretty much all that information from there so that's the audience the things that i like to pay most attention to is where are people visiting me from so i find that a large audience is from london and in leeds and sheffield I could do a Facebook ad campaign and focus just on London, Leeds and Sheffield because that is where the majority of my traffic is coming from if I wanted to. I could also contact the local Leeds press and run an advert in their paper um, and just, you know, to say 18th century Georgian house, you know, two hours away. So it's just, you can use these little bits and bobs to do specific marketing campaigns if you wanted to, but it's good to know where people are looking at you from. Acquisition. So this is where things can get a bit complicated, but in just simple terms, it's finding out which websites are driving traffic to your website. So if you're spending say 500 pounds a year with um, yorkshire.com and they are not driving any traffic to your website, you need to know this because then you can stop spending and wasting the money. If you're waste, if you're spending over 500 pounds with I Know Yorkshire or Discover Yorkshire Coast or with a listing site, um, you need to know that when you spend that money that it is driving traffic to your website because that is where the bookings come from. So this is a great way to find out. So as you can see, the most popular way of people coming onto the Rangham House website is via organic search. Now, this would be a dream if I could find out exactly what people are typing in to come to our site, but Google has stopped showing you that information. So all of it you, I can find out now, unless I go into a, a very detailed Google AdWord campaign, is know that the majority of people are coming onto the Rangham House website from a Google organic search. That's what that means. Direct is when somebody types in www.ranghamhouse.com or if they were to click on a link on an email, for example, um, I like to send out monthly email marketing campaigns, for example, with MailChimp. And in there, people can click onto the website, click onto the booking page, etc. cetera. So um, direct means that people have clicked on a link in a, in a email or they've gone straight onto the internet and just typed in this. So 
I've gone in wranghamhouse.com. And that's, that's what a direct means. Um, referral means that somebody has, again, this is what I was talking about, from a listing site. And then social means from social media, which is pretty obvious. So let's a quick little look at referral because this is a really cool one. So over the last month, I can see that hotels.uk.com has pushed through 17 people with a really high bounce rate of 70%. So it has pushed through 17 people, 14 users, but 70% of them, which is really high, have left without going onto any other page. So although that may be a really high percentage of people that have come through, over 70% you know, of them have left. So to me, um, not really effective. DiscoverYorkshireCoast.com has sent through um, four new people with a really low bounce rate of 27%. So that means that uh, a few of them have gone to the next page and had a look around, which is which is good. Again, Yorkshire.com, seven people. Now, it may not seem a lot to you, seven people. Wow, what's, what's so good about that? But Yorkshire.com, you spend, what, 200, 300, 400 pounds a year to be on that site. They're pushing through six people and um, this amount of people are sticking around. To get a return of my investment, and this is just for the last month, don't forget, to get a return of my investment, I just need two people to book to get a return on the investment on Discover Yorkshire Coast um, or Yorkshire.com. So I can see here that people are sticking around, um, which is which is great, you know? Not all of them are gonna book, but I just need two people in a year to book to get a return on my investment. So it's good to know. Now you can always take that search and do it for a lot longer period. If you wanted to do it, for example, let me do it here for January, sort of start of the year. Again, these numbers go up and up and up, so it's now 43 people from hotels, 13 from Discover. All I need you know, to know for my return on investment is that, okay, for the last seven months, I've sent through um, nine sessions, really low bounce rate, or 13 sessions, really low bounce rate. You know, these are, are getting my return on investment. Cycle uh, YorkshireWorlds.com, say I'm spending 500 pounds with these and 500 pounds with these. I know that this, this company here is sending through more than this. So, just bear that in mind when you are setting up your, your your advertising for the year is go into Google Analytics if you've got it set up and see who's drove the most traffic to your website. Really key. Okay, so that's that. And social, basically you can just see which social channels are working more than others. I, I know for a fact without even going into here that Facebook, yeah, Facebook is the one that drives the most traffic. It's because Facebook is the one that we, we pay most attention to. Behavior. Now this is really cool. So click on behavior and go to behavior flow. So this tells me the landing page. So what page do they land on when they come onto our website? And then where do they go to from there? So for me, this is, so I can see clearly here that people, most people are going to start on your landing page. As you can see, 1.3, you know, 1,300 people uh, this year have been on a landing page, as you as you can assume, as you imagine. Uh, next is, this is the, where it says affiliates, this is the booking page. So, um, for example, let me quickly show you Rangham House. Book now is done by free to book, and that, and that is the booking affiliate page that we've linked up to the analytics. Um, so the reason why people would start there would be if they have come through on a email or if they've come through via a, a social channel or or whatever this is the this is why they would come onto here so they've gone from the starting page to the restaurant so a, a lot of people have gone to from the starting page to the restaurant why could this be could it could be somebody that's already booked come back onto the website to find out more about this information about the food etc so to me what's really important and we are redesigning this website as we speak with their website designer is that the restaurant page needs more information on it. Uh, it needs more pictures. It needs more wording. It needs to know why exactly people should be, um, you know, booking an evening meal at the property. 
So I can see the restaurant there and then people then go to the west, uh, the bedrooms and then a lot of people uh, drop off there. So this is really cool. So you can start to see exactly where people are going onto your website. Now, people that go to the affiliate page, you know, they're not gonna go back. They're, they're, they're dropping off. Uh, some of them do come back in to the website, but most people, when they get to this screen, it's just good. We want people to get onto the book now button because they're going to be reserving their rooms. Now, I totally understand that people maybe just be coming to the website just to get a phone number so they can call and book. But as we all know, people are stopping calling as much now. They are either emailing or they're going through your website. And when they get onto your website, they want to make a booking. So you just need to make sure that your website is working and working well. Now, if any of this has been confusing, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, I can go. I can go through this with you in a bit more detail. Um, I'm available, Mark at Boostly, or you can contact me via the website, or you can get me on the Facebook. So, I hope this has helped shed a little bit more light into what Google Analytics is. And if you've got any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching.